thank you for joining us on NTA International. I am Charles Alpha. My sign language interpreter is Courage Ogiraki. But first, let's quickly take you through some of our major headlines. <music> President Bola Tinubu vows to remove bottlenecks around power distribution, says capacity of distribution companies will increase soon. Senate receives fresh ministerial nomination. Festus Kayamo makes new list. The Nigerian Labour Congress confirms suspension of nationwide protests. And military junta in Niger sacks ambassadors to US, Nigeria, and others. President Bola Tinubu has promised that his administration will remove all bottlenecks around power distribution to increase the capacity of distribution companies. President Tinubu renewed this hope in the energy sector as he performed the groundbreaking ceremony of the Guagualada Independent Power Plant Project. Uh, Musbao Dan Wahab now reports. What are you doing? Sinubu's administration met the country's power distribution at a stagnant capacity hovering around 5,000 megawatts for several years even with a higher capacity being generated. This is considered an abysmally low capacity for a country of over 200 million people and a government's intending industrialization to move from a consuming nation to a production hub. Nigeria cannot become a productive and industrialized economy. We cannot tackle poverty and create thousands of jobs, highly paying manufacturing jobs, unless we can generate and transmit and distribute reliable electricity. Power transmission infrastructures, distribution bottlenecks, and other value chain challenges have long been identified. And so, the current administration has its job cut out to turn the tide. But President Tinubu is positive with a solution. All distribution bottlenecks will be removed. <laughs> that this project is taken off so early in the lifetime of this administration to serve as a notice to the residents of Abuja and indeed to all Nigerians of our determination to bring positive change to this nation. Here is a starting point for the government of the day to achieve its plan to deepen domestic gas utilization and create more jobs as NNPC Limited and partners are blazing the trail in the federal government's gas to power initiative to leverage the abundant gas deposits in the country and power this project. Energy availability means a lot in national growth. And I thank Mr. President for going this direction. And I can assure him we will give every legislative backing to this project to see that it not only comes you know, into the light of the day, but it is something that Nigerians will begin to multiply from one region to the other until we increase energy availability in our country. We have seen the efforts of Mr. President in restoring energy supply to the country. I think this will go a long way in providing, in cushioning the effect of false subsidy removal because you have heard from him that this power supply is to be powered by gas. The time frame for this project is three years and there is a strong message from the president that in three years must be three years. From Guagualada, Muspa and Wahab, NT News. Like most communities in Nigeria, Guagualada community on the outskirts of the Federal Capital Territory has long struggled with unreliable electricity supply. However, the groundbreaking ceremony of the Guagualada Independent Power Plant is seen as a light of hope for the residents and its environs. Lydia Samson now reports. The excitement of Comfort Musa, a resident of Guagualada, is palpable and resonates with the people, including their traditional leaders. No, we don't have constant lights. But with this project, I believe that there will be constant lights. And I pray God should give them the power to do it successfully the way they plan to do it. Paul plan session will assist us, will enlighten us 
to promote our economic activities such as our farm program, our, our health our health center. The power plant marks a significant milestone in the efforts to improve the lives of people in the community and demonstrates government's determination to prioritize welfare and development of its citizens. For the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited GCU, Meli Kolokiari, the power plant is aimed at providing reliable and sustainable electricity to the residents and those around them. And Mr. President has promised that there will be energy sufficiency in this country. Uh, people will have access to available energy so that it can drive transformation, it can bring economic prosperity, and it can also bring growth to our country. And you can't do this without having access to power. And it has uh, asked us and um, ensured that we take the next necessary step to ensure that we start this project on time and deliver it on schedule. Naturally, key players are already enumerating the inherent benefits. Power, energy, has not only become an essential resource but has become a lifeline of economies with a capacity of 1350000 megawatts the power plant will provide uninterrupted source of power to the people and help sustain businesses operating in the area the project is expected to be completed within 3 years by nnpc limited lydia samson nta news Amewa president Bolat Ahmed Tinubu has listed Festus Kiamo as a ministerial nominee in the latest list submitted Friday afternoon to the Senate for screening and confirmation. In the communication read by the President of the Senate, Godswill Apabio, at the resumption of the confirmation hearing, President Tinubu also requested that the name of Mariam Shetty, alias sent in the list submitted on Wednesday, be substituted with Maria. Maria Meriga as a ministerial nominee. Four nominees have so far been screened today. Among them, the immediate past governor of Oshun State, Boyega Oyetola. And still, President Balab Metinubu has communicated the Senate seeking the support of the National Assembly in the successful implementation of the resolutions of the Economic Community of West African State ECOWAS on the political situation in Niger. The communication brought to the attention of the Senate by the regional bloc to restore democracy in Niger in consonance with its protocols and those of the African Union. ECOWAS had condemned the Niger coup and convened an extraordinary summit of heads of state and government uh, during which it adopted resolutions including closure and monitoring of all land borders preventing operations of flights into and from Niger, freezing assets of state among others. The president's communication to the Senate wants the legislature to note that actions are spelled out in the resolutions are expected to be taken by ministries, departments and agencies of government, including the military and paramilitary agencies. Our Nigerian ambassador to U.S. Kerry Leman Tinguri has been sacked. Uh, he was removed shortly after warning that the coup in Niger could destabilize the entire region. He, his counterparts in France, Nigeria and Togo have also been recalled by the military junta. The Nigerian ambassador to Washington, Liman, on Thursday warned Niger's junta to come to reason and return power to ousted President Mohamed Bazoum before the country and the wider region collapses. While speaking on Niger's Independence Day, he said if Niger collapses, the entire Sahel will collapse. A few hours Madame later, Asha the Junta in Army announced Ambassador that it was Niger sacking Liman Tinguiri in Washington, as well as Niger's ambassadors to France, Nigeria and Togo. Since officers seized power in the capital, Niamey, on July 26, the European Union and France have suspended security cooperation and aid while Washington has suspended training with NAMI security forces. The West African regional bloc ECOWAS has imposed economic sanctions and neighboring Nigeria has cut electricity which fits 70% of Niger's grid leading to blackouts in the capital. Food prices have gone up 
with rice prices going up by 40% as some 40% of the government's budget comes from aid from other countries. We used to buy this 25 kilogram of rice at $17. It went up at some point and we're buying it between $17 to $18. But today we are paying close to $23. We know very well that we trade with bordering countries since we aren't a country with direct access to the sea. Everything we order arrives at the port of neighboring countries and from these neighboring countries we have to transport it to Niger. So if these countries decide to close their borders, frankly there will be an impact on the socio-economic life of Nigerians. Meanwhile, the Niger's coup leaders have announced the lifting of a curfew they imposed after taking power on July 26. At Stila Niger, trans-border trading activities at the Lela Niger border in Sokoto State have been forced to a standstill as tens of trucks loaded with cement, food items and textiles materials are denied entry at both ends. The acting controller general of customs who visited the border to enforce the ECOWAS directives on border closure said the measure is not meant to touch the citizens but to restore stability in Niger Republic after last week's military coup. Zainab said in our reports. Loaded with cement and other goods that were denied entry in Niger Republic via Ilela border, the drivers were forced to return but detained between Guadaba and Ilela towns in Sokoto state with neither food nor water. At the Ilela border, some of the trucks that tried to cross into Nigeria have also been denied due to the ECOWAS directives. The drivers are exhausted after being stranded for several days at the border. Some of the trucks are empty coming back from Niger after unloading. The acting Comptroller General of Customs, Bashir Adewali Adeni, commended the perseverance and compliance of the border communities, explaining that the measure is not punitive, but the implementation of the ECOWAS directive meant to restore stability in Niger Republic, which was taken over by the military last week. He assured that the closure is not permanent and will be reopened any moment the issues are resolved. We want peace in Niger, but we also want peace all over the sub-region. So this uh, effort is to ensure that democracy is restored so that we can guarantee peace in Niger, in Nigeria and in the entire sub-region. So we can only trade, business can only thrive when there is peace. The district head of Ilela, Sarkin Rafi Buhari Tukur Abdurrahman, who was represented by Obandawakin Ilela, Abubakar Abdullahi, assured the Controller General of continued compliance to the border closure. Northwest Chairman of Customs Licensed Agents, Amin Udanyir, said their members will abide by the ECOWAS directives despite being hard for them. In Sokoto, Zainab Saido Abdul Nasser, NTA News. And now to other matters, women are particularly susceptible to adverse effects of climate change. And it is important for their voices to be heard in all discussions at all levels of Africa's governance structure. President Akufado said this while addressing the African Women and Children Conference in Accra. The president said when women are empowered through education, it has far-reaching consequences on food security and mitigating the negative effect of climate change. Climate crisis no respect of persons, impacting the lives of people in the northern and southern hemispheres of the world. However, there are regions in the world reeling under the pressure of climate change, with Africa being one of the hardest hit. Report by the UN indicate that one out of four people worldwide will live in areas with extremely limited water resources. Ethiopia and Kenya, two of the most drought-prone countries in the world, are likely to have children under the age of five malnourished if they are born during drought. And this brings into perspective the role of women in the climate discourse and that is the focus of the Africa Women and Children Conference underway in Accra. The wife of the Vice President of Ghana, Mrs. Samira Baumia, urged women to step forward and be heard on issues of climate change because they suffer the effect of the crisis. This Women and Children's Conference is a powerful opportunity for us to unite, learn from each other and craft a shared vision for a sustainable and equitable future. Together, we can make a difference. The Deputy UN Secretary General, Madam Amina Mohammed, said amplifying the voice of women and children in the battle against climate change is the way to go. Else, expected outcomes can hardly be realized. Africa suffers disproportionately from climate impacts, including floods, droughts, and food insecurity. 
protecting the lives and livelihoods of women and children in Africa from these impacts must be a priority. The Director General of the World Trade Organization, Ngozi Okunjagwila, said including women and children in climate dialogues and decisions will ensure that policies are more representative, fair and effective for people and the planet. Trade can, can indeed must be a part of the solution we're searching for. Though people often think that trade is part of the course of the climate issues we face, the fact is that trade leverage appropriately is also a powerful tool for climate mitigation and adaptation. And to President Akufuad, one of the ways to minimize the effect of climate change on women and children is by empowering them through education. By recognizing and empowering women and children, we unlock the full potential of Africa's enterprise and innovation in tackling the climate practice. I would like to propose six concrete actions and policy interventions we must prioritize. The first, education and awareness. Educated women and educated children are better equipped to understand climate change impacts and adopt sustainable behavior. The recommendations from the Accra Women and Children Conference will feed into the upcoming Africa Climate Summit to be held in Nairobi, Kenya from 4th to 5th September 2023 with driving green growth and climate finance solutions for Africa and the world as the main agenda. News on NTA International. We will take a quick break now. Please stay with us for more reports. A National Executive Council of the Nigerian Labour Congress has affirmed the suspension of the nationwide protest and backed on by the organized labor. The council took the decision after its meeting held 3rd of August 2023 to respect the assurances given by the National Assembly and President Bola Tinubu at the meeting with the organized labor after the Wednesday mass protest across the country. In a communique signed by the president of the Congress, Joseph Ajairo, the Labour Party says it will keep vigil on holding government accountable on the assurances which include a commitment to a terminal date of August 19, 2023 to address issues around hike in petrol prices and ensure that the Port Harcourt refinery commences production by December this year. To ensure that agreements reached with the president on which awards for Nigerian workers is implemented immediately and to unveil a workable roadmap to the CNG, a CN, CNG alternative next week. The Congress, however, threatened to embark on a nationwide strike uh, beginning Monday 14th of August if uh, the organized labor is summoned to court for going ahead with the August 2nd mass protest. The Director General National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Mustafa Habib Ahmed, says mainstreaming disaster early warning that would propel disaster risk reduction at the grassroots is considered one major strategic action capable of reducing the hazards of flooding in the affected communities. The DGNM has stated this on the occasion of downscaling of disaster early warning measures to grassroots for effective life saving early actions in Kanu. Eliasu Yakubu now reports. Many years in Nigeria, intervention agencies on disasters, especially floods, usually wait until aftermath of disasters to deploy relief items to cushion the effect of the menace. This strategy, experts say, cannot address the perennial flooding that has been affecting the livelihood of the people across the country. To this end, the United Nations in 2015 initiated the disaster risk reduction mechanisms with the aim of preventing disasters before they occur. The initiative has an achievable target from 2015 to 2030. This downscaling program is expected to be carried out across the country to reawaken the intervening spirit of the local council to prevent escalation of the menace. 
The name of both said, though the 2023 flood is envisaged to be more devastating, based on the 2023 climate prediction and rainfall outlook by NAMIT and NISA. He, however, said, with these intervening strategies, the effects of the 2023 disaster will be minimized. In line with NEMA paradigm shift towards disaster risk reduction and to take disaster risk management to the grassroots, we have decided to support subnational level actors, including states, local governments, and communities, to take ownership of their respons responsibility of disaster preparedness, mitigation, response, and recovery. Secretary to Kano State Government, Abdullahi Bappabichi, commended NEMO for the initiative and promised the state government commitment to realize the said objective. We are organizing special support to move vulnerable communities to safer and higher ground. And we are liaising with federal agencies and development partners to secure funding support for emergency preparedness, flood management, and victim support. Kano State is among many states of the country experiencing yearly disaster occasioned by the perennial flooding. From Kano, Ilias Yakubu, NTA News. On security, the unhealthy internal security situations and challenges in Algeria necessitated multifaceted approaches and adoption of civil military cooperation as a veritable tool towards solving the hydra headed monster. The 2023 Civil Military Conference created a platform for civil society security agencies to brainstorm on international best practices of combating insurgency, banditry, terrorism and other transnational crimes. Conference reiterated the need for a central security database for the country and improve technology and innovation across domains, including transportation and logistics systems, and therefore urged on government to foster greater innovations and technological cooperation between military and civilian stakeholders in order to enhance surveillance, resilience, and national security, as well as develop the civic strategy into a framework for public security education awareness and enlightenment that we promote and prompt greater citizens participation in the national security enterprise the conference with the theme of engaging multi-stakeholders in civil military cooperation with intelligence and security forces a renewed hope is expected to enhance the renewed hope agenda of the government to reform the defense and security doctrine of the nation and still on security, the Nigerian Navy is to deploy technology to enhance effective surveillance of the nation's backwaters to checkmate illegal petroleum thefts. A chief of Naval Star Vice Admiral Ikechuku Ogala I disclosed this at this maiden visit of Naval Formation in River State. Kingsley Amajiri now reports. Visit of the chief of Naval Staff to commands and formations in River State gives him the first hand information on the personnel, infrastructure, platforms, and the operational readiness as well as challenges. Vice Admiral Gala taught naval facilities and platforms at Federal Ocean Terminal One, Nigerian Navy Basic Training School One, Nigerian Naval College One, Navy Shipyard, and the Nigerian Navy Ship Pathfinder Port Harcourt. The Navy, under the new leadership, is poised to respond appropriately to the lingering issues of oil bunkering and has resolved to deploy technology to confront economic sabotage. We are going to improve our surveillance capability because we want to be able to strike the criminals even before they, they, they go into the act. We want to arrest them while they are planning, while they are thinking about it. We don't want to be on the uh, defensive. We want to take the war to the criminals and get them even before they start the act. The act. This we can only do through proper intelligence, both human intelligence and using technology. And that's why we're trying to extend the coverage of our maritime domain awareness capability. 
Flash Admiral Ikechukogala is Nigeria's 22nd Indigenous Chief of Naval Staff in Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajuri, NTA News. Up next is weather prospect for Nigeria and other cities around the world. That is it on the news. Thanks for watching. I am Charles Alpha.